Ano nga ba yung mga medications o mga gamot na pwedeng inumin ng buntis na hindi makakaapekto at hindi makakasama sa inyong baby? We will talk about that today, so if you're interested, please keep on watching. Hi everyone, it's me again, Dr. B, and thank you for being here to smile with me. Nandito na naman po tayo to spread awareness and to educate people like you about dental health. Kung nung episode 1 po, pinag-usapan natin yung mga dental treatments na pwede during pregnancy at kung saang trimester maaaring pumunta ng dental clinic. Ngayon naman po, pag-uusapan natin yung mga gamot, medications, um, kind of anesthesia na pwede during pregnancy at pwede din sa breastfeeding moms. Unahin po muna natin yung anesthesia. So, ang anesthesia po, ginagamit po yan kapag bubunutan kayo ng hipin, para po hindi kayo nanginkilo kapag nililinisan kayo or pinapastahan kayo for root canal treatment din. So, mahalaga po na alam natin to, no? So, generally speaking naman po, safe ang mga anesthesia sa isang dental clinic or kapag po ginagamit in dentistry. Sa mga buntis naman po at sa mga breastfeeding moms, safe na safe po ang mga ito. Especially yung mga um, anesthesia natin like lidocaine, prelocaine, and etidocaine. Um, lahat po yan ay FDA rank B. Ibig sabihin, it is proven safe. It won't cause any harm to your fetus or your baby. So in this table, we can see yung mga anesthetics na safe during pregnancy and safe during breastfeeding. Mga pwede tayong gamitin during breastfeeding na we need to use with caution kapag tayo ay buntis. But for me, syempre mas gugustuhin ko nang gamitin yung safe talaga during pregnancy and during breastfeeding kesa naman gumamit tayo ng mga anesthesia na we need to use with caution. Ayaw nating iris na magkaroon pa ng ibang masamang mangyari. Kapag po buntis kayo ang mga dentista, kailangan lang din po talagang maging maingat sa pag-i-injection, sa pag-aspirate, sa pag-administer ng anesthesia. Kailangan po talaga dahan-dahan. Hindi po pwedeng mabilis. Next is analgesics naman. Analgesics, ito po yung ating mga pain reliever. Safe ba ito sa pagbubuntis or safe ba ito sa breastfeeding moms? Depende po sa analgesics. Analgesics po, meron po yung three kinds. Acetaminophen, NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and opioids or narcotics. So, doon po muna tayo sa acetaminophen. Ito po ang pinaka-safe na pain reliever para po sa mga buntis. Usually, ginagamit po ito for mild pain. This medication is the first choice during pregnancy kapag po may masakit sa inyo. Ano ba yung samples ng acetaminophen? Yan po yung mga paracetamol like biogesic, Tylenol, Panadol, yung mga may all po ano. Yan po yung um, samples ng acetaminophen which is very safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. NSAIDs naman which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, we need to avoid this during pregnancy. Okay? Remember po, wag po tayo gagamit ng NSAIDs kapag po kayo ay buntis. So, ano ba yung NSAIDs? Hindi naman namin alam yung NSAIDs na yan. So, yung NSAIDs po, ang mga example po ng gamot na yan are aspirin, ibuprofen like Advil, naproxen, mefenamic acid, ketorolac, yung silicoxib na piniinom talaga natin yan kapag may sobrang masakit sa atin, di ba? Kailangan po natin itong iwasan kapag tayo ay buntis or nagbe-breastfeed. So again, yung mga gamot po na nabanggit ko, hindi po yan acetaminophen. NSAIDs po yan. Pain reliever po silang lahat, pero hindi po siya safe during pregnancy. Bakit bawal lang NSAIDs during pregnancy? Because ang NSAIDs po, like aspirin, increases bleeding. At sa infants naman po, it increases bleeding time. NSAIDs can also decrease amniotic fluid during third trimester. Ibig sabihin po, less cushioning for the baby and more pressure sa atin pong umbilical cord. These medications could also prolong labor, could cause miscarriage and birth defects po sa mga baby. At kapag po nasobrahan tayo sa pag-inom ng mga ganitong gamot, lalo na po ng ibuprofen or Advil, it could cause premature closure of ductus arteriosus sa puso ng baby. So, magkakaroon po ng problem sa flow ng heart ng bata. Narcotics naman po or opioids, ito po yung third type ng um, analgesic. Ano? So, we are using this kapag po severe-severe pain na ang nararamdaman ng patient. At hindi na po gumagana yung acetaminophen. Ano? Ibig sabihin po, this is our second choice when the patient is experiencing some pain. Especially severe pain. 
Pwede po itong itake ng buntis at ng nagbe-breastfeed pero po in low doses and short duration only. At hindi po ito pwede itake with antibiotics. Again, narcotics or opioids hindi po pwedeng pagsabayin kasama ng antibiotics. Ang mga example po ng narcotics na pwede natin gamitin during pregnancy are oxycodone, hydromorphone, and meperidine. But remember, okay, remember this, if you are lactating and breastfeeding, please avoid meperidine, okay? Kung puntis po, pwede po to in low doses. But kung nagbe-breastfeed po kayo, bawal na po ang meperidine. It causes high concentration sa breast milk and your baby will be high. So, code naman, bawal talaga siya sa mga buntis or nagbe-breastfeed, okay? So, sa first trimester, it is proven that it causes congenital defects sa baby. Sa so, third trimester naman, kapag masyadong matagal yung paggamit nito, it causes neonatal respiratory depression. So, magkakaroon po ng... Um, hirap sa paghinga yung baby. So, chronic use po of codeine, or ito na nga po yung addiction sa gamot na ito, it can lead to premature delivery and fetal dependence. Again, for pain, our first choice will always be acetaminophen for mild pain. For severe pain naman, pwede tayong gumamit ng narcotics, but remember, pwede lang siyang gamitin in low doses and short duration. We can see naman on this table na very safe talaga yung acetaminophen during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Yung aspirin, which is an NSAID, yun nga nakalagay, we should avoid it kapag tayo ay buntis at kapag po tayo ay nagbe-breastfeed. Yung glucocorticosteroids naman at yung ibuprofen, yan, NSAIDs po yan, nakalagay, we should avoid it. But, it is already safe kapag nagbe-breastfeed na tayo. Yung codeine naman, hydrocodone, oxycodone, like what I said earlier, pwede naman po natin siyang gamitin kapag severe na yung pain, but we should use it with caution kailangan in low doses and short duration. Again, as much as possible, i-avoid na lang po natin yung NSAIDs during pregnancy. For antibiotics naman, most of it are safe except tetracycline, like doxycycline, um, clarithromycin, ciprofloxacin, and metronidazole. Bawal ang tetracycline because it can affect the developing bone and teeth of the baby. Ciprofloxacin naman has adverse effects on cartilage development. Yung clarithromycin, pwede siyang gamitin during pregnancy, but we need to use it with caution. Clarithromycin, according to this table, uh, wala siyang nilagay na safe, wala din siyang nilagay na avoid, but nakalagay use it with caution. So, in my own opinion, iwasan na lang natin to. We don't want to risk hurting the baby or the pregnant mother. Metronidazole, we can use it during pregnancy, but we can't use it when we're breastfeeding or when we're lactating because it causes high amounts in breast milk and it causes different taste. So, makakasama din po sa baby nyo kung maiinom niya yun. For antifungals naman, as we can see, kahit na category C or category C or D yung nestatin and fluconazole, it is very safe during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. So, in cases na merong thrush or fungal infection si patient, sa dila or sa bibig, pwedeng-pwede natin gamitin yung mga medications na to. Sedatives naman, ito po yung mga pampatulog natin or pampakalma sa pasyente. No? Ang mga examples po niyan, um, barbiturates, benzodiazepines, at lahat po ng ito ay bawal at we should avoid it during pregnancy and during lactating period. Kung kailangan-kailangan naman po nito, kailangan po patulogin yung pasyente dahil natatakot or baka matroma po sa procedure, we can use midazolam or clonazepam. Ito po yung mga referred na sedative during dental treatment. Nitrous oxide naman, which is also used in sedation, um, controversial po ito no? because there is no FDA classification. But we have rules when we need to use nitrous oxide for a dental procedure and for sedation. So number one rule when it comes to nitrous oxide sedation, do not use nitrous oxide unless it is absolutely necessary. Unless po kailangan, kailangan na lang. So um, isa po yan sa mga last options natin. Ano? Second, do not use it in first trimester. So, we have different ways naman to manage the patient's anxiety, to lower their fear kapag po may dental treatment. So, um, kung pwede pong iwasan ang paggamit nito, iwasan natin. Kung gagamitin naman natin to sa second and third trimester, we need to make sure that we will just administer it under 30 minutes. So, 30 minutes lang po ang pwede. Number four, use at least 50% oxygen while under nitrous oxide sedation. Dahil nga gas po yung nitrous oxide, kailangan din po meron tayong um, supply ng oxygen. Number five, the good thing naman, nitrous oxide has no concern in breastfeeding. 
For emergency medications naman, we have albuterol. Ito din yung salbutamol. We can use it as long as it is steroid or beta-2 agonist inhalers. Safe siya during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. Yung diphenhydramine naman, we use it for allergic reactions. Safe siya during pregnancy but it is not safe during breastfeeding so we should avoid it. Yung epinephrine naman, usually ginagamit ito sa mga anaphylactic reaction. Kaya kailangan yung anesthesia din natin without epinephrine because it causes pasoconstriction. So we need to use it with caution. And ang maganda naman, safe naman siya pag nagbe-breastfeed tayo. Yung flumazenil naman, antidote to for benzodiazepine overdose. As I said earlier, yung benzodiazepines or yung benzos, kung tawagin namin, it is a form of sedative. So we need to use it with caution talaga during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. Maloxo naman, this is for overdose na opioids or narcotics. Ito na nga yung mga overdose ng drugs. So, if we're gonna use it during pregnancy and during breastfeeding, yun nga, we need to use it with caution. Nitroglycerin naman, um, ginagamit natin to for emergency cases ng nagkaroon ng heart attack, angina, myocardial infarction, yung mga ganun. So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung diphenhydramine lang yung FDA rank B. Meaning, it is proven that it is safe to use during pregnancy. Paalala po ulit, kapag po may masakit sa inyo, buntis man kayo or hindi, huwag po kayong mag-self-prescribe. Huwag po kayong basta-basta uminom ng pain reliever or antibiotic. Make sure to ask your doctor first or your ob your dentist before taking these medications. So, okay po na sigurado kayo, lalo na kapag po buntis kayo. Again, I will put a summary table here about sa mga napag-usapan natin para po uh, ma-screenshot nyo or ma-save nyo po sa phone nyo to remind you yung mga dapat, mga bawal at hindi bawal. So that's it for today guys. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. Sana po may mga natutunan kayo for today. If you have questions or suggestions, just comment down below or you can message me through my um, social media accounts in Facebook and Instagram. You can also follow me and like my Facebook page. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell button for you to be updated sa mga susunod ko pa pong videos. As I always say, always be happy. Don't forget to smile. Life is short to be sad. See you on my next video.